I did want to make a couple of acknowledgements why we had a change of program this morning um, and Pahia mentioned that um, two of our presenters who were scheduled to be here this morning weren't able to be here, very gutted about that. So Kura Paul Burke who um, has led a project in the challenge um, based in Ohiwa Harbour was going to talk about the journey that they've been through um, restoring the mus uh, muscle beds in their harbour and taking a circular economy approach to that work. Um, then Trevor Russ from the Great Bear Initiative, Coastal First Nations um, of the Haida Nation was going to be here to talk about their experience in implementing B, uh, EBM and joint decision making in Haida Gwai for many years. So particularly gutted because from those two presentations we stood to learn a lot and gain um, from their uh, you know, years of work and experience. However, a, a special thanks to our, again to our Canadian Fano for stepping in with their video. And the, the thing that really stood out for me, which um, is comforting in terms of uh, the challenge finishing well, is the similarities and alignment of much of our work and focus is, is obvious when compared to our um, Indigenous and First Nations whanaunga. That sense that we are all on a very similar journey working together for the betterment of our taio and, and tangata. And so that's something that has stood out quite strongly, unsurprisingly, um, for me out of the out of the court this morning and yesterday with, with Peleka. So I'm going to hand over to Julie to start us off, um, give us a bit of an overview of where things are going, and then I'm going to come in at the end with um, a, a tool that we're building that will hope, hopefully wow you, but we'll see. Thanks, Linda. So just really want to give you an overview of the challenge as a whole and, and what the plans are. And I looked at it this morning and it is 10 weeks and one day till the 30th of June. And that's when the challenge hits the brick wall. Um, that's when everything has to be completed. So we're, we're running pretty hard at the moment, but what I want to share with you are the things that have, some of them have been in train for quite some time. Um, we want to leave a legacy and that's really important. We want to have things available for people to use and leave that legacy for people going forward. So I'm going to have a quick chat about synthesis, the regional workshops we've got planned, some work we're doing with regional development agencies, some educational resources that have been developed, the repository, and then Linda is going to introduce you um, to Tahora. So in terms of our synthesis, this is really bringing all the strands of the research that's been happening in the challenge together. And, and, and really, the last two or three days, we've been focused on one of those strands. When we set out, we had an objective, and Tanya talked about that uh, on the first day. But if we look at that vision, and that is for New Zealand to have healthy marine ecosystems that have value for every New Zealander, whatever those values you may hold. When we looked at that, what were the outcomes we needed to achieve over the 10 years? It really comes down to having healthier seas. And I think we're all very aware that our marine environment in many areas is quite degraded. So what do we need to do to improve that? So there were three components to the work we've done. The first was to improve decision-making and management of the marine environment using ecosystem-based management, a holistic approach to how we manage the marine environment. The second was to enhance our blue economy. And when we talk about blue economy, we don't just think about things industrial that are done in the marine environment, but we think about an economy that is productive economically, but also contributes socially, culturally, and environmentally. So moving our marine businesses through to being blue economy businesses. Some of the businesses are already there, some haven't thought about it. How do we get people on that journey and businesses on that journey? And what we've been hearing a tremendous amount um, over the last three days has been about that New Zealand context and that empowerment of um, mana moana. So those are the three pieces building to that uh, vision. So we then have a look at what have we got to do. And we need to act now, and I think all of us are aware that we need to act now. We can't leave decisions. Our marine environment is degraded enough. 
We ne- and we do have knowledge and tools and guidance that allows us to do that. The challenge has produced a huge amount of material, guidance, documents, tools, etc., that we can use to move forward now. And we need to do it in a collaborative way. And that's really important as well. We've then got a series of recommendations. And that is, we need to empower leadership in the marine environment. Where those leaders come from, the knowledge they have, and we need to empower them. And there's been a lot of discussion about that over the last couple of days. We need to enhance the connectivity between our natural and our social systems. They tend to get disconnected. Let's bring them back together. We've, again, we've heard a lot about that over the last couple of days. We need to collaborate and we need to be inclusive. Again, something that's been shown throughout the last couple of days. We need to be looking at implementing place-based ecosystem-based management, really thinking about what's happening in place and managing at that level. We need to build capacity to be able to do that. And we need to incentivise the development of the blue economy. So those are a series of recommendations that come and build on all the research we've done. To support those, we've done synthesis across a a wide range of projects to come up with knowledge-driven actions. There's no point in just putting the research out there. We need to make recommendations and say, this is how we need to do it. So we've got a set of recommendations. Here is how we go on that journey and the guidance to do that. And I'm struggling to read these, sorry. (laughs) Um, We start with governance and ocean governance. What's the framework for that in New Zealand? We're unique, how do we do that in a better way? We need to implement ecosystem-based management in existing legislation. We can't wait for legislative change to come. We need to be doing it now, and research has shown us that we can move a long way down that track within the legislation we've got. Let's make the most of that legislation. Let's get that process moving. We need to create spaces for indigenous approaches in marine management. Again, we've heard a lot about that over the last couple of days. We need to allow for a broader range of knowledge to be brought to the table when we're making decisions about the marine environment. That is Mataranga Māori. It is about local knowledge. It's also about using expert opinion. It's a great excuse. We've got no data, we can't make a decision. No, but you can use a whole lot of ecological principles in these knowledge bases to take you forward in that decision making. We need to enable uh, Te Ao Māori and Mataranga Māori into that decision making table bring it to the table. We've heard a lot about that in the last couple of days. When we start thinking about the ecosystems, we need to be managing cumulative effects. And when we think about the impact on our marine environment, we're thinking, we tend to manage it, fisheries over here, aquaculture over there, we'll think about a discharge here. People don't think about the cumulative effect of those activities. We need to be thinking about how we manage cumulative effects. And we've developed methods in the challenge to be able to do that and enable people to consider those cumulative effects. And associated with that, those decisions don't come without risk and uncertainty. Developed and built on methods that allow us to consider risk and uncertainty when making those decisions. We know our systems are degraded. We need to be thinking forward to restoration and recovery. How do we do that? Can we build on all the knowledge to do that? One of the things, um, again, we tend to work on a first-come, first-served basis in managing our marine environment. Whoever's got the first consent, way you go. We need to be thinking about it more strategically. And one way of doing that is to use marine spatial planning, where you bring people together in a collaborative way and you look at your marine ecosystems and how you might be be able to utilise those really effectively based on everybody's values. That might not just be industrial use 
or whatever. What, what are the cultural values? What are the recreational values? All those things need to come to the table in that. And then finally, in, um, incentivising the blue economy. So what we've done is pull together a high-level summary of tho those um, knowledge-based actions. And those high summaries with recommendations, those are really aimed at our managers, senior managers, ministers. These are the things you need to think about around our marine environment. Under those sort of guidance document, here are the recommendations, here are the tools and the things you, you have now to enable you to enact those recommendations. And we will, now I'm going to sort of move and talk about how we're going to take these out to the community. And we're going to start, each of these topics will have a webinar. Those will be through the um, May-June period. This includes our regional workshops. Last year we had a conference, Some of, a lot of you were there at the conference in Wellington last year, and we brought, people came into Wellington. We've decided to take a different approach this year and go out into the regions. And starting um, mid-May through mid-June, we will be doing seven regional workshops around the country. And these are open to all our Māori partners and stakeholders. Anybody who has an interest in the marine environment is welcome to come and join us for the day. Registration's still open. I know that's a long URL. If you Google Sustainable Seas, go to the News and Events page, the registration is there. And I hope many of you will join us. Each program around those regional workshops will be a little bit different. We're going to start and feedback on the local research that's been done in the area. So we'll have several t presentations around um, what's happened in the local area. And then we're going to use an interactive uh, breakout sessions to look at some of those topics around those knowledgeable, knowledge-based actions. So um, one round cumulative effects, one round how do we do EBM? Um, how do we, you know, I'm struggling to read them. Um, Ecosystem-based management, how do we, how do, we do that? Um, how do we uh, encourage and support indigenous-led approaches in our marine management? And again, how do we incentivise a blue economy in New Zealand? So that will be the content, bro that's a broad outline of the content of each of those workshops. Okay. Associated with those, we're also going to be working with the regional development agencies around the country, and there's a few more of these sites. We're also going to go to Northland, Gisborne, Taranaki and Southland with these. And we're working with them specifically around our blue economy research so that we can go and talk within, in the regions to people who are interested in us moving to a blue economy and take that research out to them. Now, for our researchers, and our co-development partners, many of you in the room, um, we also want to recognise the tremendous uh, effort that everybody has put into the challenge. And this includes our advisory groups who have been absolutely key to the journey of the challenge. And we're going to do these in association with the regional workshops. Um, at the end of those workshops, we're going to have a function and we really encourage you to come and join us and celebrate the successes of the challenge. We will also be giving you a sneak preview of um, the documentary series that has been developed by the challenge called Turning the Tide. That's going to be uh, five 10 minute documentary episodes and there'll also be a reflections video about the journey of the challenge. So um, there's a QR code and a URL there. Please register so that we know um, how many we've people we've got coming in terms of catering, but we'd love for you to join us at those. It's really important we've got this huge amount of knowledge and how are we landing this, how are we getting impact, and getting that to our tamariki is really important. And we've got two initiatives um, that are going on at the moment. We've worked with Marlborough Girls College, a tremendous teacher there, Melinda Bentley, who has developed a whole curriculum through their science their social studies, their geography, about environmental sustainability through an ecosystem-based management lens. And she's developed in this, that in her school. That's been spread to schools around the Marlborough area. That is now being written up so that it's available to any teacher 
in New Zealand. So that is able, and that's built on the resources from the challenge. We've also had two geography teachers who have looked through all the material from the challenge and they have written uh, 11 units based on the challenge material and this will go from sort of intermediate through high school and they've taken 11 topics and drawn on the research from the challenge and put together units that teachers literally can pick up and teach from and having looked at those units Yes, they'll be used by the geography teachers, but I know they'll be used by the social studies teachers. And something was said at the geography teachers conference yesterday, was reported to me, how do we use these and keep the science teachers away from them? So um, they're going to hit the science area as well. So that's really us looking to really share the information from the challenge. Long-term legacy from the challenge, it's really important that people can access all the documents easily. So what we have been working on is a electronic repository with a company called Figshare. And we're putting, this is the front end of it, you can go in there, it's searchable, and we will hold all the electronic copies of everything that's come out of the challenge in this searchable. There's over 700 items going into it now and I know there's still a lot of um, outputs to come from the re researchers that are in the room. So all the material, reports, infographics, webinars, videos, etc. will be in there. And Linda is going to tell us about Tahora, a really exciting um, program that Linda has been leading and the repository will sit underneath that. Just going to skip, I'll, I'll talk through this shortly, but uh, we'll start with this. We are all the Moana. Together we thrive. But right now, I am hurting, unwell from pollution, habitat loss, and climate change. And I need your knowledge to provide understanding and to take action. Introducing Tohora, a landmark research tool for sustainable seas. Named after our mighty whales, a taonga, a guardian of our ancestors, a kaitiaki, leading our tupuna across vast oceans, and now helping us find our way once more. Tohora harnesses the knowledge of the Sustainable Seas National Science Challenge. That's more than 100 research projects over 10 years throughout Aotearoa, New Zealand. It's a resource that rapidly summarises the findings of our foremost marine environment experts, supporting policymakers, business owners and community groups, all in the pursuit of meaningful change and a future our tamariki can feel proud to be a part of. And with Tohora, our moana can thrive once more. Kapai. So, a couple of years ago we decided um, that uh, one means to help us achieve impact um, in an enduring way beyond the life of the challenge given all of the National Science Challenges end in the middle of this year. 
was that we needed some um, engaging, accessible portal that people could go to and all sorts of people could go to to access information out of the challenge. And so we um, have been working with a company called Daylight um, who've helped us put this together and under the guidance of um, our governance group in Kartwe Māori, um, putting this together. Um, it is an AI-assisted search tool, um, and I've just spotted Matua Joe walking across the back. It might be the first time you saw yourself on that video. <laughs> um, it's not finished, and we um, are hoping to launch it in the next couple of weeks. We're still um, uploading some of our challenge information and documents, but I thought I'd give you a little a sneak look at it, um, and then... Uh, you'll hear about it when it gets launched uh, um, shortly. Essentially, it includes <clears throat> a whole range of things, but as Julie mentioned, it's really focused on the three sort of key pillars of the challenge, being ecosystem-based management, blue economy, and um, as Rion said the other day, the TAM, the Te Ao Māori. You can either go straight to the AI search tool or you can have a little bit of a nosy round um, tohora first and there's information about the three pillars of, of our activity which really you know, explains what they are um, in a very concise and hopefully accessible and engaging way. Um, a bit of an explanation, some case studies down on the right hand side there that kind of are exemplars of the application of these things, um, the principles that have been developed in the challenge for ecosystem-based management, as well as some resources, including um, a series of animations um, that, are, that are just having the final touches being put on. Similarly for the blue economy, very similar structure, you know, outlining what we mean by blue economy given we have developed a, our specific um, kind of bespoke version of it based out of our research, some exemplars and resources that people can go to to find out further information. And then last but not least, um, the Te Ao Māori um, section of Tohora, which explains for people the sorts of information that can be found in here, the, some of the, the uh, approaches coming out of our Te Ao Māori synthesis program and um, a, the examples or exemplars again down the, down the left hand side. Then you can go to the search tool um, and I'm just going to pick a couple of things um, to have a look at. The idea is that people can either be guided by the questions that are here um, as sort of tasters or they can put in their own question into the search bar um, and it will come up with after searching through all of the documents that we've uploaded to it, it will search through and it will come up with a series of results, um, the most relevant ones being at the top. Um, and it gives you a little, a little um, insight to what that document is about and sort of the three key points or key themes coming out in that document. And then you can whip down and have a look at those documents, click on one of them, it gives you more detail, uh, more information uh, about the document, what's in the document. Um, as well as um, down the right, the right hand side is always where you kind of find the, either the examples or the, the gnarly bits that you might want to know, um, as well as uh, providing some information on related documents and topics. You can also, if you wish to, actually open the document itself. That takes you um, to the documents and you can go in and have a look and download them. Now that I've done that, I don't know if I can go back on this, oh here we go, so yeah that gives a little bit of a, a little bit of a review of, of what we're putting together, really hoping it will be useful, um, we'll have some 
enduring life beyond the middle of this year, um, and that we will be continuing to add documents to it right up until, as well as videos, so there's multimedia content in here as well, um, educational resources, the, the information Julie was referring to, they'll all be loaded in here in sort of one easy place, an accessible place to find the information, as well as the repository, which is kind of more probably for um, a, spe a specialised audience. So that's where the academic documents are going to be brought to the front, whereas Tohora is meant to be much more accessible to a broader, broader audience base. So yeah, that is Tohora, um, and we are really excited to be able to launch it very soon. And all of your research will feature in it. So. Kia ora. <laughs>